Hey guys, what's up? What's up, guys? This is Gabe with the Real Estate Power Play, hanging out on an awesome Tuesday morning slash afternoon. I guess it depends on where you're at. We have <laughs> man, we have Marty here, just chilling out with his beanie. It's probably cold over there. Well, how cold is it over there, dude? Yeah, I don't know about you guys. Uh, we don't have the luxuries of the sun that you do in Florida and Houston. So we're wearing short sleeve shirts, my friend. <laughs> it's thirty degrees here, so. Just uh, if you could, you know, show some respect for the fact that some people have to wipe off snow off their windshield and some don't. That's all. Dude, we wipe off the humidity off our eyebrows. <laughs> all right. When just checking the mail. That's how it works over here. And then we got the man, Mark Monroe. Mark, what's the word, bro? How you gentlemen doing today? You guys uh, all, are you guys all set for the holidays? You guys get all your shopping and all that done ready for the family? Yeah, much, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I say yes because if I say no, then I feel guilty. So I just try to get rid of the the guilt. It's that right? time of year. It's that time of year. I love this time of year. The you know we did the boat parade. Um, it was kind of cool. You know we uh, did the whole lights and had it been like a hundred thousand people watching. We started in one part oh on gosh. the coast and one all the way. It was a good time. It was Friday night. It was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, it looked wow. good, Mark. I think you had a picture or two on that. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. It was awesome. That's cool. That's cool. Well, guys, let's get rolling. Uh, my sign fell down back here. Um, so let's get rolling. We have a lot to go over today. We got a lot of cool stuff. We want to bring awesome value for those who are watching. And uh, if you guys don't know, every week, Tuesday, we show up and we talk about our businesses and real estate, what we can do to bring value to others. It's a fun thing. We started as a couple of guys just hanging out. We got from New York, Michigan, Florida, and Texas. So a pretty wide range of folks. And uh, we all specialize in different things. So if you have questions for any of us today about how to build our business and how to grow in or build your business and grow in real estate investing, uh, let us know. We'll be happy to help you out and help you grow forward. We also have a podcast. Uh, this is on Facebook. So if you're on the podcast right now, please like, share, do all that stuff and uh, make sure you subscribe. All right. So. Uh, today, we're going over in the real estate power play, what is your queen bee role as a real estate investor? What is the th top three things that you should be doing daily, every day, all the time that you're always focused on? And what are the things that you are you know personally? So this would be us going personally into our business and sharing what are some of the things that we do um, that we just need to throw off that we don't need to focus on. And so let's start off by just asking a question a couple questions and and let me explain a little bit about what a queen bee role is so if you look at a beehive all right and this comes out of the book from clockworking if you don't know the book uh clockworking it has transformed my life go buy one it's really good for you and we t it talks about and and i really adopted it uh, adapted it to my business is what are the what are the top thing that that queen bee of the whole colony of your whole business of all the real estate investing and deals and wholesaling flipping and buying and selling and real estate what is the thing that makes you money now if you're new this is tough right marty like this is something that's really tough to grab a hold of because we talk with new people a lot yeah and uh if you're experienced you probably know a lot of these things you might just you might not have them down so let's help people, the newer folks, really grab a hold of some things that, and sometimes it's good to know, if, correct me if I'm wrong, of stuff that you shouldn't be focused on. Like, look, that will never make you money focused on that thing. Yeah, no, right? that's beautiful, Gabe, because that's, I think, the tough thing for a lot of the new investors, right, is, hey, but my website, I'm working on my website, Gabe, you know, I'm, I'm working on, I got this, uh, I got this great business plan that I'm working on and, you know, and I'm just building my team right now and, Oh, by the way, I, you know, I'm just I'm figuring out what business card to use. And it, it's like, stop the nonsense right now. Stop the nonsense. You know, number one is you need to be focusing on and Mark will say this. You need to be focused on revenue generating activities, especially in the beginning. Revenue generating activities. So what's a revenue generating activity? Well, that's getting your leads or, or getting marketing out there. Right. So how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to do that through cold calling, through texting, through direct mail. I mean, there's a number of ways of doing it, but you need to focus on one. In the beginning, if you don't have a lot of money, well, it's pretty simple. You should be cold calling. Uh, you know, if, if again, if you do have some ways of developing your, if you do have some, uh, some money to spend, yeah, you could do some direct mail, right? Um, 
But yeah, number one, door, or door knocking, door knocking, cold calling. Those should be like the number one things. If you don't really have any money that you should be working on revenue generating activities, though, getting the leads, talking to sellers and, and taking action. Yep. So you do you do a lot of cold calling. What why is cold calling so important like why is it that that's the number one thing you're always hearing because i agree guys cold calling needs to be really up there next to number two you know like it needs to be up there why why do you think so for newer folks number one is the learning that you're able to to take in from when you're talking to sellers you'll start to hear stories you'll start to pick up on uh, you'll start to pick up on really their motivations. A lot of sellers will have very similar motivations in, you know, those different categories that you might be calling. Like if you're calling a landlord, a tired landlord, they probably have a, a couple reasons why they want to sell, right? There's, there's probably reasons why they want to sell. And then you could use that story when you talk to the next landlord, Gabe, so funny you say that because I just talked to a landlord. His name is Mark. Anyways, I'm buying a couple properties from him and he goes, Marty, I'm just tired of ten tenants and toilets. Are you sick of getting those calls, Gabe? Yes, I am. Well, yeah, that's why I wanted to call you. I know you have a property over here and I'm buying a few over there. Let me ask you, would you be open to an offer? And if so, okay, great. And then, so now you're just, they trust that there's a credibility factor. You're already working with people. You've already done deals before, right? So even if you haven't done a deal, just having that call because they could say, listen, Sonny, Marty, let me tell you what's, no, 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 you're wrong. That's not why we would want to sell. It's because of this. So you, you might have a thought that is just incorrect and they'll tell you, right, the landlord, but then they'll give you something, right? Then they'll give you that piece, that nugget that you could use for next time. Guys, when you're cold calling, it's, it's, it's not always going to be someone that goes, yeah, I needed to sell. That's, I'm so grateful that you called, right? A lot of times they're going to tell you, hey, that didn't work out for you, that call, but I'm going to give you a little nugget here so that you can take it to your next call and be better because of it. So yeah, number one, it's learning the business. So for people, when they're brand new, it's a great way to learn the business just by taking the time to call people. 100%. And number two, you're getting closer. You're getting closer to that motivated seller. You're getting right. closer to them, right? A lot of people are scared to make that phone call. So think That's of you, so you're, you're differentiating yourself, right? A lot of people text right now. A lot of people send direct mail. And I can't tell you how many deals we've gotten, right? Because they go... Hey, I, yeah, you know what? I, it's funny. I got a stack of direct mail. You're probably in there. Yeah, I probably am. Maybe, I, you know, I, I'm not sure, but and, and I won't. And maybe I didn't send any direct mail to this person, right? right. But I'll say, right. you know what? There's, I'm sure there's some direct mail there for sure. I wanted to call you personally and put a voice to a name and actually talk to you because I'm actually the owner of the company, okay? Right. And I'm buying properties right now in your area. And that's why I wanted to talk to you personally you're immediately going to get so much more credibility and get so much right. more rapport that they're going to go, this guy actually had the, you know what, to call me. So I want to work with this guy. So that's okay. why I think those two main reasons that that's so, why that's one of my queen bees. So these are his queen bees. If you guys haven't noticed, he's passionate over these things and he's really good at it. So, um, and then let's go to Mark and then Mark, will come back to me. Um, Mark, Queen B rolls. I love uh, one of the things I learned from Mark is focus on the task closest to the money. Uh, so, Mark, life has changed for you too, right? Like you, you have different things from the beginning. Um, I've seen you totally transform your business. Um, has your Queen B roll changed, and what do you see it now? No, it's always no matter what business you're in, and I've had several different businesses over the years. Is the number one thing, and it, and we actually at one time in one of our businesses, we had this posted all over the walls so the whole entire place knew about it. It was work closest to the money. It's the bottom line, closest to the money, because you can get pulled, especially in this business. There's so many different layers and so many moving parts. You can get pulled in 20 different directions, and it's always closest to the money. Um, and actually, I don't know. I just had a literally just had a conversation with one of my JV people today about this exact same situation and person's great super intelligent but um his mind was like we have we have a 11 unit um building and we have one of the buildings vacant one of the units vacant and they were there with his handyman that's going to do the work they were there on um saturday or sunday um picking up a refrigerator bringing it to this place and i'm like well you got to get them in there 
I text them, say, hey, make sure you get in and get measurements. We need some doors so we can start getting these materials ordering. <clears throat> so I, I talked to him after he left and he goes, oh, we didn't have a tape measure. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, it was kind of like a nonchalant, like, oh, we'll get to it. And two days went by, you know, and that's why I text wow. you, Marty, this morning. I'm like, how long does it take you to get a, an apartment ready? In my past, if it's, you know, just ready to go, it takes about three to five days to get an apartment ready to get it going. But his he's kind of nonchalant. And then, and then he's talking about this other tenant, you know, a breaker went and she moved the refrigerator over to the other part of the kitchen. And I'm like, dude, that how is that going to make us money? And right. you didn't have a tape measure. You had Walgreens right next door. You had a grocery store. You had nine other units that you could go and knock on the door and borrow a tape measure and start getting this material going. And you could we could you wasted two days. And that's not right. he's not working closest to the money. So that's an example. Like you want to work whatever is closest to the money. You know, you know, a seller's contract. You have a closing, and that's where a lot of people can get pulled in twenty different directions, especially if you're new. And I've even seen people. Um, you know, been in the business and get pulled in 20 different directions. So that's my number one thing is closest to the money. The second thing is urgency. Whatever it is, let's do it. Let's go. Let's time is money. You know, that's part of the same concept. What, what does that role look like for you? That. I was just going to say that like urgency, have some urgency in your day, guys. Like, yeah. like I always say this in our group for the upstate New York real estate investor group. I go, guys, you can't be whimsical about your day. If you're an investor and you're full time, how are you going to provide, how are you going to put money, you know, in your account? It's not by hoping that a deal comes on your desk. You need to go out and get it. So yep. I'm so happy you said urgency. Yeah. Ur urgency is, yeah. Urgency is right there with closest to the money, closest to the money and urgency. They go hand in hand with each other. Those are like, that's where it's going to make you money. You're going to be pushing. If you have that sense of urgency, you're going to double your income just as your own person that being that creating that sense of urgency, just like this, you know, the JV, you know, they didn't, there wasn't a sense of urgency, you know, instead of it, like if they had that sense of urgency, like be resourceful, go get that tape measure, do what you need to do. And then, you know, they send a text message, you know, last night, Oh, what about this property over here? I'm like, Dude, if you had the tape measurements, we could have been finding some products and getting, getting the stuff and material and get, income closest to the money. So that's kind of this type of thing. And then my last thing um, to, to make money is networking. That's probably my third thing. It's just network, network. And if you're new in business or new into this and you kind of lost and you don't know how to make phone calls, just start networking with people, start networking with realtors, jump on Zillow, calling for sale by owners, learning the business. You know, those are free leads just to kind of practice on, just network with other investors, just force yourself to, to network and make five phone calls a day just a network and then you then business was just kind of evolved from there. So those are my three things. Um, so hopefully you guys like them That's and good. then uh, Gabe, we'll jump over to That's your good. three. Yeah, guys. Uh, I love this topic. Uh, I love to help people understand where to prioritize. I think the next round, we should maybe talk about some things that we, you shouldn't be doing <laughs> like <laughs> time wasters. Um, so my queen bee rolls guys, the thing that I do on a daily basis is, Number one is not even, it's actually not acquiring deals. It's actually building relationships with people. Um, by doing it yesterday morning at 8 a.m., picked up a deal in the afternoon. Okay, it happens that fast. Just by building a relationship, all right? It should be anywhere 40, 45K deal. I mean, so that's a pretty strong deal. Um, and that would be my money after everything's paid for and stuff. So, but that was because I was building relationships in the morning time. And that's what I believe to do. And I take that from some of the training I got as I, as I used to be more involved as a realtor. So I bring that one-on-one, -on -one, that relational type thing to the table. And then the second thing that I focus on is um, just acquiring properties. And that's really my main thing is acquiring properties, just looking for contracts to, to send out, to get, to acquire more properties, whatever that might be. So they go hand in hand. Notice they are not uh, organization, right? Applying my emails and making sure I'm a zero inbox. Um, I actually had some people that were helping me do some of those things. And I realized, you know what? Uh, that's not making me money either, right? What's going to help me make money? I need someone to pick up the phone to help me get the contract over, to help me get something else over, or look some of the data up. Um, so those are the things that I do. And then now that we do more social type things, it's creating content. That's my number three, because that's more of a, just a social presence that I get. Now, how does this work for newer people? Like for, in my point of view, if you are a new person coming into the business, 
these are really just the three key things you need to work on. We all talked about it. One, you're making cold calls, right? You're contacting the seller. You're getting in front of people. That's the relationship building side. You need to know the language of wealth. You need to know the language of real estate investing or property or development, whatever it is. And the way I say it, guys, is, and I don't know how you agree with it or not, but my thinking is every, every industry, in, industry has its own language, right? Every culture has its own language. And so without language, there's really no culture, right? So if you want to go into real estate investing and you're new to this and you want to learn, the best thing to do is to get onto those group chats and start looking for relationships to build. Start looking at those areas. We have multiple group chats just within this this podcast that we do. Um, get involved with those groups around you, maybe socially, right? Go to a networking event, something like that. Learn what they are doing to get in front of sellers. Learn the language. Then that that should be uh, that is not primary, by the way, but that is something that you should be doing. Number one is really get in front of that seller, really trying to figure out how to get in front of that person. Now, that's going to be calling realtors, calling other people, calling the other people that might know that end seller. Um, it might be calling up the, the list company, right? Because you got to get you got to get the list somehow. So how are you going to get the list? Well, you got to figure out how to do that and grab that list. And there's multiple different sources for those. What we don't advise you do is to spend two weeks with making sure it's the perfect list. Cause I've done that before. I don't know if you guys have done it before going, ah, um, you know, I'm looking for a list for, for multifamily type properties and for RV parks and mobile home parks and stuff like that. Everyone's looking for different stuff. And I'm like, you know what, this is all I have. So let me make these calls and see if these even work. Right. Uh, what we don't advise you doing is spend time with your postcards where we're trying to figure out if this is the right font or the right letter. Uh, I used to have a group, guys. I don't know if I told you that. Um, what do, I, I think, Mark, you were part of it. Remember where so we called it pink postcards or something like that? Pink postcards and networking or whatever it was. And it was just funny because it was kind of like we labeled it that because everyone's like, is it should be a pink postcard? Should it be yellow? What color postcard, Marty? Just tell me the color because I don't want to spend the money if it's the wrong color. <laughs> so you've run across those before, right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. No. And, and that's so good, Gabe, because you're giving people some real uh, actionable advice. And what I would say for people who go, well, how do I network? Because again, you know, this stuff might come easy to us. So let's just kind of boil it down. I think it's by if you really want to go in and start adding value. So what I say by adding value is if you're new and you're just not sure like what you how can I serve this person? Like, how can I serve a Gabe? Right. Well, he just talked about the three things he's do he does. Right. You know, I am talk I'm, I'm always looking to talk and, and network. Well, maybe invite him to a networking event that might have something that, something roughly to do with. Like if you're an accountant, maybe, that might be an area that Gabe would like to talk to as a bunch of accountants that maybe maybe that he could raise money from. Right. Um, he talked about social media. Maybe you're someone who's really good at TikTok. And you might be able to help Gabe do some of these things. Hey, Gabe, I'm going to set this up for you. And I know how great it is because XYZ did it. And he's got all these followers and he's got this. Those are really important things. So if you're someone who wants to start, start thinking about what these people already do. And then where can you do to add value? How can you serve them? Because if you go in with serving first, okay, not how can I make money from Gabe? How can I serve Gabe? Because what's going to happen is the good is going to start flowing because Gabe's going to go, wow, 10 people came up to me trying to get money from me. And Look, you're trying dude, to help If me. you are in the North Houston area, I like a cafe mocha. I like two pumps, <laughs> extra large, three shots. All right. It's very simple. I am that easy. There you go. There you go. And, and Gabe will take the time then, right? So am I, Gabe. I'm daddy. I'm very easy too. The people who invite me to lunch, invite me a coffee, I'm very quick to take it. We if get a lot of those. Me, you know, we get a lot of those though, right? And and the real some of them you have to take because they're good. Some of them you're like, uh, let's make sure that you know you know what you're talking about. Let's get a phone call going, like make the calls, right? So one of the things I like about what Mark does is somehow Mark figured out a way in his career to really be great at networking at all different levels. Um, and so, and, and yeah, he's been around for a while where he's seen different businesses grow, but uh, I like to ask Mark every now and then like, dude, how did you, how did you network? Now, 
Mark calls it socializing. I just like to socialize, right? <laughs> Which normally requires what? I mean, to socialize with Mark, what do you do? You have to have a glass of wine? I mean, what is it that you have to have to? What's the what's the qualification? No, I, I just even when I talk to sellers, like I really don't get into business immediately. I get into knowing them a little bit and ask the questions like where they're from, what are they into? I just start asking questions. And then, you know, to me, that's considered socializing and just and things just evolved over time. You talk to them and like, you know, and if they don't know somebody, who do you know? Ask them who you know, and then they can kind of build your network and referral network. But for me, I'm just always out there. I'm not looking. I guess it just comes natural to me now after all these years. How do years. you do that? How do you do, how, let's let's help the newer person that's come in that goes to the market and says, look, how do you even ask, dude, who do you who do you know? I mean, it's just think of talking to one of your best friends or like uh, like your best friend's brother or sister. And like, you know, you're sitting around a table or you're just sitting there in the house and you're like, hey, you know, what's what do you do for work? You know, tell me a little bit about you get to know yourself. Think of that person. Don't walk up that person like, oh, my God. I mean, I've been there before. I've walked into a, an event where, you know, to raise capital or, you know, multi multi millionaires i'm like what am i doing walking into this place and kind of but then to get in there you just start relaxing and just start just be yourself and just start talking to people like hey what do you do you know uh what do you what are your interests are you into sports and then talk a little bit about you have to talk about little social events that's going on just stay away from politics and religion <laughs> you know sometimes in, t in today's environment i have to bite my tongue sometimes you know but just just be yourself, talk to them and get to know them. And it don't always have to be about business, especially if you're new and you don't, and you're worried about like what Gabe was saying about the language until you feel comfortable, talk to them a little bit about like them personally and them to get to, you know, personally. And then you start to know the language over time and, Oh, what do you do? And kind of grow from there. That's how I, I kind of go about it. And then like, Hey, you know, like, who do you know? Like, Hey, I'm, you know, do you know somebody that may be interested in, in investing in some real estate? Or do you know somebody like today, you know, we're trying to find a painter for one of our places and I put it out there in some groups and like, who do you know? And out of that, I got three different painters, the same concept. Man, that's good guys. So, okay. So, so we have a lot of the to do's and stuff like that, and this is good. So if you guys are listening and you have any questions, let us know. Uh, we'll be able to help you out and just kind of what we do and maybe go into more detail on a daily um, okay, let me add a little bit to what Mark just said real quick, because yeah. I think another thing that might help people when they are trying to get a meeting with someone that they respect or someone who they go, I want to follow in their footsteps is really, you know, when you're talking to someone who's inspiring you is, is be honest, be like, Hey, you're, you're someone who really inspires me and you're doing some really cool stuff and I want to follow in your footsteps. So you know, could I, could I take some time with you and, and talk with you about that? And maybe that time with that person is right then on the phone, right then and there. You're not always going to get a coffee date. Okay. These guys are busy. These women and, and these men are very busy. So you need to get it going right then and there. Um, right. And, and, and here's some questions to ask. Here's some thought provoking questions. To ask Let's do it. Different. Let's do it. I love this. So, you know, Gabe, you know, how do you approach sales? You know, how do you approach uh, a sales conversation in your business right now? You know, that, that's something that I'm interested in, you know, good, Gabe, how do you see yourself? Right. You know, what are, what, what's the neck, like what drives you Gabe? Right. You know, these are questions that you might get some crazy answers and you might get some really cool thought provoking uh, answers from these people who do inspire you because I, a lot of times they're not getting these kind of questions. Uh, right. You know, you know, what do you believe about finances? You know, what, what did you think that was true? You know, what did you think that was true? Maybe, you were a firm believer that you don't believe anymore in business, right? Yeah. So just a couple of questions that, that might help out in asking and giving the, that person that you're asking some really good uh, thought provoking questions to ask. So that, that's what I wanted to just tell. Yeah. I, I think that we should maybe take a couple of minutes on this topic a little bit about, you know, the relationships and how to open the doors and communicate. Cause it's difficult for a lot of people. Yes. And, you know, and, and how about you, uh, Gabe, how do you go about it in your relationship building? How do you meet people? How do you get somebody that you don't know? Like, and so Gabe, guys, start I... from like, as soon as you walk in the door, because I really <laughs> think that would be helpful. Like if you can, I know okay. I'm putting you on the spot. But you're walking into an event. Now, you, Gabe, is a master at this at, right now. But I'm sure if I asked him 10 years ago about this, he would say oh, yeah, something I was nervous. Right. 
So yeah. I want you to think about, because I know that you do some of the best events in North Houston for real estate, uh, is when, as soon as you walk in the door, what does it right. look like? All right. So guys, this is, I, I, uh, I use profiling for those who don't know how to do profiling, do profiling Pro and that sounds horrible, right? But you're doing personality profiling. It's literally, you're going through the disc profile, which is the DISC. You can put yourself through there. There's another one called 16 personalities. That's really in depth on who you are. If you're brand new, this would be really good for you to know. And the reason why is you might not be the best wholesaler. Your personality might be something else that's more data, more analyst, more other type of thing. You might not like wholesaling or might you might think that's the only way to go, right? And so um, I would definitely do those things. So I, I know those personality types. So I profile, like right when I meet somebody, if they come up to my networking group, I want to know you as fast as possible, right? So I'm going to ask, hey, look, if you're a younger person, I'm asking, what are you hustling on? What are you working on? What is your dreams and aspirations? All this other stuff. If you're a middle-aged person, you probably have a couple kids, right? And so that's pretty easy. So if you want to know one that's really well, I use the form. So it's family, occupation, recreation, and money. Right. And that's the I've used I've used that for the longest time. So it's family. Wait, Gabe, say that again. Recreation. That's a beautiful thing. Say yeah. it again. Let's write yeah. it in. Yeah, I write it that. in there. So family, occupation, recreation, and money. So this is what I love. This is what I love, guys. So family, everyone has a family. You either have a messed up family or not, but you have family, right? So can you tell that's gonna be a good conversation to start? So how's your family kids? Oh yeah, they're fine. Uh, I left them with the the ex-wife and blah, blah, blah. Okay, don't go there, right? That You don't need to talk about that. They don't wanna talk about family, okay? Occupation, okay, cool. Hey, um, so are you doing this full time, Marty? Or is this, uh, like, how are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Well, you know, I wanna do this. And then you have the full story. I wanna do this full time of like, oh yeah, I've been doing this full time for about eight years. This is what I've been working on. Or, I, you know, I, I'm more of a money lender or I, I do have this type of job. Like, this is how you find out if they're the lender for you. This is how you find out if they're gonna be your next deal provider, right? Like, it's just asking, are you full time? Like, what do you call full time? Are you, do you have another job? Awesome, sweet. So, is that helping you out with doing this? Well, kinda. Like you don't ever want to go, ah, oh, dude, your W2 sucks. No, as you go, dude, is this helping you out with doing what you want to do? Like I know enough stuff that if you're only W2, you're paying the highest tax, you're paying more taxes than me because you don't have any benefits, right? You have the benefits of your job and stuff, but there's no deductions and stuff like that. Like you're not seeing the other side of things. All right, so now you got the occupation. Now you're looking at recreation. Recreation is what Marty was talking about. So what are the extra things somebody is doing with their time, with their money? with their resources, right? And so you're talking about from sports to hanging out, Do I know a lot of people over here for some reason are taking flight lessons. So there's a lot of guys I know that are, they're full-time investors, they're learning how to fly. Um, golf, all these other things. Okay, cool. Well, who do you know in golf? Like, hey, how does that help you in business? How has that helped you with other stuff? Or is it just like a, um, just release some energy type thing? Oh, cool. And then you talk about money. Right. And then you're talking about the money side of things like, OK, cool. So what's money tends to lead towards a thing that people don't want to talk about. But the reality is we all live in America. Like you have to see the fact of everyone has seen what's going on in the news. Everyone sees where the dollar is going and everyone has to go to eat. Now, let's let's say this again. Everybody has to go to the grocery store. That's money. Everyone has to pay for a new car at some point or a car or tires or gas or oil change or something. Everyone has to use their money, right? Buy assets, buy properties, move their money around. So we can go anywhere. You can talk about taxes. You could talk about property. You could talk about anything that you really want to do with some money, leaving that person's bank account and going somewhere else. Dude, what have you been spending your money on lately? It is that easy. Marty, listen, dude, in the last month, What's the thing that's been taking the most of your attention you've been spending money on? And if they go, um, cryptocurrency, if they talk crypto, boom. Okay, sweet, bro. So now we're, so what kind of crypto? So what are you doing and how are you using it? And what are you seeing happening? That's so interesting. That just came to mind the other day. I was talking to a buddy of mine. What's your perspective, Marty? I don't want to know my perspective. I already know my perspective, right? So that's the form, right? If you can follow the box of the form, you can build a relationship with anybody. All right. Let me ask um, Marty, Mar Marty, that same question. I know you got to jump off in about 15 minutes. But, um, 
but uh, tell, tell us like how you go about it when you're networking and how you approach. Yeah, people. absolutely. So as soon as I'm walking in the door and again, guys, I was there when I first started where you may have that imposter syndrome. I'm not like these guys and girls, man, this is, this is top level stuff. I'm just a fly, you know, no, you are an investor. Know that as soon as you walk in the door, you're investing your time being in that event. Okay. Number one. So you're just like everybody else. You're a human taking the time going out to that event. Okay, good. Number two, I will immediately start going up to pretty much everybody. And I will say who I am. Hey, this is Mark. Hi, I'm Marty Grizzani. I'm new here. Um, I'm a new investor. I'm just excited to be here. Thanks for taking the time, guys, and I'll come in, right? And I'll introduce myself to people, okay? And I'm the first one to put my hand out. Can Go I ahead. say something on that, Marty, yeah. real quick, just so people understand this? When you walk up to some, to say that you're a new investor, there's people, experienced investors, that look for new investors. So keep that in mind if you're new. We look for new investors to kind of mentor and help them and, and bring value so you, you collaborate and work together. So keep that in mind. Don't be scared of that. No, it's an amazing thing. You really want to tell people because they're going to know you're new. <laughs> okay, so you might as well just tell them and and be and, and you know be humble about that fact. Hey, I'm brand new. I don't know a lot, I, I, but I'm just I'm so glad to be here. Right. So you're humble, but you're hungry. And and I think a lot of veterans in this game like that. They want to hear that you're you know you're a humble person, but you're someone who's willing to put the time in. You're being here at an event at seven thirty shows that. Okay, and then immediately compliment. I know who's doing big stuff. When I first started, I knew who was doing big stuff, and I would say, hey, I love that project that you guys did on X Y Z Street. That house turned out awesome. I just I wanted to tell you that. Hey, I saw that you guys were number one in listings this last month. That's awesome compliment and compliment, 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 compliment. You got to always continuously compliment because as soon as you do that, you're new. You're, you got a new buddy. As soon as you compliment me, you got a new buddy. And that is something everybody wants to hear. They want to hear compliments. And then you start asking them, Hey, it's a beautiful thing that you guys have done here. Wow. This event is awesome. You know, how did this all start? And now I'm asking questions. So I'm going to go introduce myself being humble. Okay. I'm going to then compliment and then I'm going to then immediately ask questions about them. And I am not going to say a word about me, a word, unless I'm asked. Okay. Hey, and then I'm going to have a nice, real quick. yeah. How, do you use this? I'm this I, I know the answer, but just to help people, do you use this with sellers also? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause what are we doing? We're selling, right? right. We're selling what we're selling us. Okay. We're selling who we are. And what, but really what we're not, and we don't mean that. I'm not like, I'm trying to be slimy or salesy, right? But sales is great. But what I'm saying is I'm building rapport and I'm building trust. But what I'm, but what I'm doing, Gabe and Mark, that's more than anything. And I know you guys both do this and we don't even think about it sometimes. We're just destroying doubt that they shouldn't work with us. That's good. Because man. someone, when they see you goes, all right, what's this guy? You know, who, who's this guy and girl? What are they? No, I'm destroying doubt automatically by putting myself out there. I'm being humble. I'm complimenting you. And then I'm asking you questions. And then if you ask me a question, I will give you a great response because I'm ready. Okay. But that's what I wanted to just to leave that with. But yes, it's very similar to when we're talking to sellers, right? We're building rapport. We're complimenting. Like for a fact, here's one real quick. When you're talking to maybe a distressed seller, Hey, Mr. Seller, I just got to say, I'm looking at houses on one, two, three street. I just want to let you know, you were so smart buying a house there 10 years ago. This is a great street. So I just wanted to let you know, I know there's some issues going on right now. Looks like there might be some things. I know the bank might have some issues right now with you guys, but I just want to let you know, five years ago when you bought that house, you guys had some great foresight. So anyways, that's why I wanted to get, and so that's a quick little, little tidbit right there <laughs> that might help. But no, at the end of the day, we're always constantly complimenting, providing value, and uh, asking questions. That's that's great stuff. <clears throat> um, I always tell people, sorry, one second, gentlemen, go ahead, Doug Gabe. No, I was going to ask you next, Mark. <clears throat> Are you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good now. I had <laughs> a frog in my throat. But I always tell people, like, new in the business, like, he who asks the questions is in control. 
of the conversation. So like if you're ever talking to somebody and you don't like, you know, some of the questions and they're pinning you in a corner and you feel uncomfortable answering the questions, turn around and flip it and just start asking them questions. Um, you know, I was working with one of my other JVs, you know, JVs uh, partners and they're getting beat up on trying, you know, people are asking questions about the house and why the house is not moving. And I'm like, well, you need to start asking the questions. Where do you live now? How much are you looking, you know, what are you paying for rent? Start asking those questions. Same thing with networking. I just ask questions and, you know, everybody loves to hear themselves talk. Everybody. You could sit there. And I learned this uh, from one of our coaches at a mastermind that we worked at, that we all met at actually. And uh, he always said, is like in one of his videos that he was doing is like, he went to a party one time and he never once brought up anything about himself. And he said, when a person walked away, he goes, that person loved me. And that person didn't even know who he was because he just kept asking questions after questions after questions. You guys you guys know that same video that we're referencing to. That stuck in my mind. Um, and it's true. I mean, it's so true that people just, just ask questions no matter what it is. You know, for me, I just start out, you know, hey, where are you from? You know, find out what they're from and then talk. Wherever they're from, bring something up that's local in their area. Could be... The weather it could be sports. It could be, hey, I've been there. I traveled. Do you know this restaurant? Whatever it may be, where they're from, and you know, what do you do? Same thing with business, and kind of go into detail. How's business? You know, how did you get into it? And just ask questions like that, and just kind of goes from there. Um, Marty, you have some more to say there. I was just going to say off? because when you do that, Mark, like what you said, when you do that, when you're asking the questions, when the time comes, when that person is to ask you a question. They're really going to give a shit before they don't care. Okay. They don't care. They want see, because here's the reality, right? What did Zig Ziglar say? They don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Right? So when you're, you're caring by asking questions by then, and then that leads to more questions that leads to more questions that leads to a compliment that leads to this, right? That leads to a statement. And then when it's time, for that person to ask you a question, they are going to really want to know. They are going to really, truly want to know, and they're going to want to help you when you say, well, it's funny you ask because I'm doing this. I'm just not, I'm having a little issue. Well, what's the issue? What, what, what can I do to help? Right? Because you've already asked me a couple of, you've already asked me questions, you know, all that you've already, you knew a little bit about me, right? So if you're about to talk to a seller or if you're about to talk to somebody who's inspiring you, who's somebody that you want to follow in the footsteps, you better know something about them, right? Because you want to have that research in so that when you're asking them that question, you probably maybe know the answer or you know how to pivot to that next question. Like, well, I know you guys did a great job on this project and wow, that looked really good. No, what, what, what was that about? How did that start? And people are going to go, wow, this guy really gives a shit. This guy takes his time. This so guy Gabe, you should, really Gabe, you should probably uh, get us on to the next topic. Uh, we, I guess we spent quite a bit of time on this one. Yeah, this is, the, <laughs> but I love it. We could keep going on this stuff. And uh, so that's good. All right, guys. So queen bee roll. All right. So the next part of the queen bee roll, uh, you know, so again, this is going off of just some of the stuff that we've been learning where you have to focus on the things that's the most important thing to your business. Focus on the cash flow, focus on revenue generating things. It is really tough to do. And I think that uh, to, to clarify, guys, we are not saying to only make these conversations happen because then you find yourself in this echo chamber of newbie talking to another newbie. And now you're just thinking that you're building relationships and you guys are just talking about your life at some point. That's not what we're saying, because I've seen those things and you get stuck in those echo chambers of somebody else who's never done a deal before. No, we're talking about leveling up and talk to people who actually do transactions. All right. Now, uh, let's go on to Marty here, where we're going to go into sharing some of the things that we've seen that just haven't panned out. Now, this is where we become a little bit more vulnerable and going, you know what? I focused on some stuff that was not productive. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that I wouldn't do because I've done it before. So Marty has some stuff we all do. Marty, what is something that you're like, I spent three months on, six months on, five years on? What is something that you can help out a new person, help them to collapse time? Never touch that again. Yeah. So number one is get an agent. You know, a lot of times I, I was kind of saying, Hey, I want to do this all on my own. I don't need an agent. I don't need a, uh, you know, someone to help me out, find deals, real estate agent. No, you want an agent. Um, I, I will say also, because again, it doesn't hurt to have one. 
it's doesn't, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. It, it's, um, it's, it's important to have, it's important to have someone to have your back. That's looking at properties for you, uh, as another eye. Number two is I would say for people who are starting to build their business a bit, right. You want to immediately hire, like for me anyways, it was getting a bookkeeper. You want to get your stuff organized. You want to keep your things intact. And it, it, again, I don't want to relearn QuickBooks. I don't want to learn that. So if you're at something that you don't want to do and you want to focus on getting deals and making calls, then yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but the time that you save, I think those are the two things I would say to uh, immediately eliminate or get. Cool. Do you have any uh, stories that you would like to share where you're like, oh man, I totally went off, off, off key on this deal or this life or this business or something like that, where you're like, this is, and, and now you look back and go, okay, a lot of people make this mistake. Yeah. I mean, think about just when you're getting ready for tax season, like right now, right? Like we're, we're having those conversations and thank God, right? Because back in the day, I've come with just a binder of just receipts and just, it was just, it's not a business, right? You want to start acting like a business. If you want to have a business, you need to be, you really need to be taking those steps that you need to be a business. This is not a hobby. Um, you know, our accountant told us straight to our face. Hey, you're going to be out of business in two years if you're not doing this right. All right. So that was an aha moment. That was a wake up call that we needed to take this seriously. We're just not that type of people. Matt and I, we're not good at that, 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 that organization of that kind of thing. But that's a, but that's a $10 an hour job. Our getting deals is a multi-thousand dollar an hour job. So why not? stay with what we can be good at, right? Double down on that. I think a lot of people try to work on their weaknesses and I can respect that. Um, what you want to do is double down on what you're good at and then you want to offload your weaknesses. And that's how you become a, a really, that's how you become a better business. I know in the beginning that is hard. So you kind of got to muscle through that in the beginning. But as soon as you're able to start to immediately hire, okay? Hiring and then getting out of those jobs that are $10, 12 hour an hour jobs. Yeah, we're not talking about huge hiring roles or anything like that, guys. We're talking about uh, getting someone to help you out maybe a couple hours a week or something like that. Yeah, not, not a full-time bookkeeper. Full, I should I yeah. should mention that. Not full-time yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, this we're person talking is not operating all the time. Yeah. Right. And you don't want them to be either because then they're only focusing on yours and stuff like that. There's, there's other stuff there. So, okay, cool. Mark, what is something? Oh, yeah. Marty's heading out for the hour, guys. Marty, we'll see you later. Love you, dude. And we'll talk to you later. Peace. Take care, Marty. Uh, Mark, what are some of the things that you can say that you did in the beginning? And I know some of them personally, cause you and I were working on some where you're like, okay, this wasn't really the best use of my time. Not so much that, but maybe in the beginning phase where you're talking to some of the newbies that are listening right now that want to get involved. And they're like, I just want to make sure I'm making the best use of my time. What would you say was not the best use? Wasn't your QBR. Okay. Um, you probably, I'm probably going to talk about something else. I would just say in general, um, besides real estate, just in past business is, um, keeping somebody around that's really negative, that's cancer and making things toxic and taking too much energy out of whatever the situation is, whatever the business is. And it's just draining the whole situation um that's probably my number one is like all right i'll keep somebody around a little bit faster to kind of work with them i usually now i do the three strike rule type of thing like hey you know what let's just a, a warning let's just talk about it whatever the second time is like all right this is a really stern warning and then the third time is just cut ways um i would say that's probably one of my um what i do now like like this morning i i kind of felt like you know quite frankly like an asshole to my jv because you know, I had to really lay into him to get his mindset around the right, you know, closest to the money. And, but, you know, I was tried doing it other times, nice and easy, tactfully, but this was the second time I really had to jam it into him. And I, and I don't like to be like that, that asshole, but that's how you try to get that cross in the mindset. So that's one of the things, but the person, I mean, the, the, my JV partner, he's super, super sharp, definitely intelligent. It's just his mindset like he needs to learn his mindset to keep working closest to the money instead of other things. Again, like I said, there's so many different moving parts. And this is a great topic though. So you're talking about your QBR could easily be offset by having toxicity around you. This is like really, really well, because I think that a lot of newer people that are getting involved in real estate, they, they want to tell everybody, 
You know, you want to tell people like, Hey, I'm getting involved or I'm buying properties or I'm doing this other stuff. Toxicity for me was right on. I had a leader in my life was telling me, okay, well, are you making any money at it? And I'm like, well, man, I'm learning a ton and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And I was like, it's, it's a lot of information, but I'm having so much fun. And I know this is going to happen. It's like right to my face, like probably not going to go anywhere if you can't make any money at it, which there is a sense of like truth to all of that. But it was so toxic at the time that literally I'm like, am I ever going to make money at this thing? Like maybe he's right. Maybe I shouldn't do this. And my income is totally went way beyond his would ever be, but it was a toxic thing to say. And I started going, okay, maybe I shouldn't share that much. Right. And so there's a point of letting them in your life. There's a point where some of them are around. What about those, those investors, Mark, that have family members and other people that are toxic and it's destroying their concept or their perspective, or maybe their their energy level to do their queen bee roles where they're like, okay, I got to go do this thing that Mark told me to do. Now I have these negative people around me. Mark, what do you, how do you, how do you maneuver through that stuff? You know, for me, um, God, I, I would say how I did. Well, nowadays you just, you can tell immediately, you know, if somebody's toxic and just there and like, they're not doing anything in the results. I mean, I'm just, I, I I'm just done. I don't want to even waste my t- time and energy on it because, you know, I don't want to get pulled into that environment. You know, years ago in my twenties at one time, you know, I was, I had a best friend, a couple of good friends that were so toxic. I mean, it, I was close to them. They were like brothers. And, you know, I did that whole book, the secret, you know, the whole concept. And I literally probably like late twenties, early thirties, I cut out about 90% of my friends and family that were just toxic. And I just spent time to myself for about six months and just kind of refound myself and found new people I hung around with that brought me up to the next level. Like I always said, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I always want to kind of be the dumbest one so I can learn from and kind of grow from. And that's kind of what my, that's kind of where I come from. And what that about your that, stuff? That, that's Go really ahead. good though, because I'm thinking about if, if you want to be the dumbest person in the room, you have to be, you have to have a degree of humility, right? Cause you know, <laughs> you don't know everything and you're going to be that guy that's going to be like, look, I'm going to ask a question. It's going to sound dumb, but I got to ask, like, I, I want to know these answers. Like, I got, this is the reason why I'm part of this room, right? Or it part just of this takes group of people. You, it just takes you to another whole level of, right. I mean, look at, look at us in our group, how we met a year and a half ago and like how much knowledge that all oh. of us just shared and brought to each other and oh, God. all of us grow to that next level. You know what I mean? So so you said something that, so guys, uh, Marty was mentioning some other things. Mark is, is talking about, you know, making sure if you're getting involved, the toxic, the toxic level, what's the environment that you're around. And, uh, if you guys don't know, Mark is really good about being around some really cool people. Every time, every time I talk to you, man, you're, you're around someone else. That's really cool. And I'm like, man, how do you know these people? Um, So that's just one of his gifts, guys. Uh, So definitely take that. Um, For me, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but to go into depth, I think if you're a newer investor, being around the same people at the same level is probably the most harmful thing. And I think that you don't know those people until you start asking around and trying to do business with them. Um, you have to size up. If you if you have the ability to get involved with real estate investing and the the just be, it's a different energy level. Like you, the speed has to be, be pretty fast. Uh, if you think you have the stamina and the speed to do it, then size yourself up quicker. If you can, to those who are around you and realize, okay, this person might, might be a little bit further away than I am as far as speed. So you need to find some of your running mates because it is fun. You want to go out to eat. You want to have a good time with people. Um, it is fun. I mean, no doubt about it, but I now see myself sitting around at tables. The people, they talk faster. They got more ideas. We're cutting each other off because we got you know, okay, I got that property, you know, I got this other stuff. And so you want to make sure that you're around that energy level that, that, that coincides with you, uh, task closest to the money queen B role guys is, is getting deals. You got to get deals. And so if you're spending your time more talking to people that don't own property or cannot get you a property, you're going to waste your time. That's just what it is. You're, you're wasting life and hours. 
we're talking about networking and building your business right earlier in the qbr is just the relationship building side but keep in mind my second qbr is right after that is acquiring deals that's it like i don't have to think about who's going to do my transaction coordinating i don't want to think about you know all these other things it's literally build a relationship which just has to do with the people that can find me deals and new money new lenders those are my two two main things uh, and then future growth, those are, so it's really three future growth is like, we're moving into mobile home parks and RV park stuff. So I want to, I talked to somebody yesterday, they, they do buildings of mobile home parks. Cool. But that wasn't my whole day, right? Mark. I mean, it wasn't what I'm focusing all day. That was literally a 15 minute phone call on a way to a deal that I'm acquiring. Right. Yeah. So you can do both. Right. Yep. And so that's one of the things I want to encourage people is that like, Hey, look, there's a lot on your plate. But what's going to put money in the bank account, right? Finding people that have an asset that they want to sell, they're probably going to sell it at some form of a discount compared to what the market's at. But that's because you can provide value for them and they see that, right? You said something, you said something really good there. And I just want to piggyback off of what you said. And it's, it's really good stuff is like when you're in your car driving from one place to another, that's the best time to just pick up the phone and just building some relationships. And that's key. I mean, that 10, 15 minute phone call can, you know, plant the seed for something future to come. And I think that's just so key. And, and you know what I've seen the best on that is that, and, and you and I do this sometimes like, Hey, look, dude, just want to connect real quick. I got seven minutes. That's it. You got seven minutes to build a relationship with someone. What do you want to go over? Right. You got this, this and this. OK, that that. Hey, about that deal. Mark normally <laughs> Mark does this, guys. You guys want to know the, the back end story with Mark. We're doing something or he's running or I'm in the track or something like that. And uh, or I'm on the trails and literally it's kind of like, hey, that text message you sent earlier. I wanted to piggyback off of that. Sometimes we use WhatsApp. Right. And we're just WhatsApp and hey, great conversation. Good thing. Hey, did you ever think about blah, blah, blah? You know, all those things. You can use these other things. Right. If if you have an iPhone, an iPhone to an iPhone can do voice text messaging. Just, you know, send someone, hey, man, what's up? And then do or, hey, you know, so and so I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm going to do a voice text. Hey, Merry Christmas. What's up? Just want to see that all that stuff you can do while you're doing drive time. Right. Because yeah. you need to acquire deals. And I just want to end this on the fact of going. We're not talking about being distracted. We're talking about being more focused. One, you got to build relationships. Because if you can't do that, you really can't buy from a seller because a seller is the relationship. Two, you got to be good at acquiring properties, figuring out how to get in front of people. Marty's saying cold calling, right? Getting in front of somebody, doing that vo voice conversation, right? Mark is focused on getting the task closest to the money, right? My thing is focused on getting contracts in the door. Like you got to get contracts and get them moving forward, right? And then creating content, creating something else to let people know that they can trust you. So those are the things, guys, that I think are the most powerful for doing your queen bee role, which is the, the capital role that you need to be working on. And I guarantee you, I, get, I don't do many very, and I don't know who said it, but I don't do many guarantees. But when I do, I will guarantee you, if you focus just on your top two or three things, you will have a great business. You will have deals coming in. You have money coming in. And that's the cool part about real estate is that your chips could be down in the dumps. And you just focus on your top two things and you could turn things around pretty quick. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. If anybody's in the Houston area, I highly, highly recommend definitely uh, hook up with Gabe. He runs a great, uh, I haven't been there yet. I'm actually going to fly out there one of these times to just go to the <laughs> event because it really looks like a lot of fun. I mean, it looks like a great event, good networking. I, it's on my bucket list. I'm probably going to do something your maybe bucket. like that. <laughs> No, mm -hmm. it is. It's like, I think March or, you know, February, March, I think I'm going to come out there and just go to one of your events. It yeah, looks man, like a we got one coming up. We're, I think we're going to do it in March. It's going to be over short term rentals. Uh, and okay. it's hot, guys. It is freaking amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, Mark, you want to sign us off? Great stuff. Uh, don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on uh, one of the podcasts, please uh, leave a comment below, uh, like us, share. And if there's anything that you guys want to uh, us to discuss, uh, you know, just hit us up anywhere. We'll follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and your favorite podcast. Have a great week, people. See you. Peace.